What's going on everybody? Rob A here and today we're taking a look at Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series number 9 Autobot Jazz. Uh, it is Autobot Jazz rather than just Jazz according to the box just because of licensing issues of course. Speaking of licensing you do get officially licensed Pontiac product here. You get a Pontiac Solstice as uh, that was Jazz's alternate mo mode in the 2007 live-action Transformers film. And here you can see Jazz in his robot mode, as well as the included accessory of a running Sam Witwicky carrying the AllSpark cube. Um, yeah, so this guy retails for right around $89, I believe, $90, uh, $100 with shipping most places. I got this from Hasbro Pulse. Uh, so it rounded out right about to $100 just with tax and all of that fun stuff. Uh, it arrived this afternoon. Bottom of the box doesn't really have anything. Uh, you can see on the side here you've got nice images of the solstice mode and of course uh, the robot mode. And on the back you've got some more uh, featuring the articulation. Pose, pose shown requires additional support. Well, alright. Uh, Sam Witwe and Allspark. Of course, you've got the, the vehicle again. And of course, it shows off some of the uh, different accessories and just uh, different action features like the sliding visor. Um, and of course, the spinal cord attachment. So you can totally make this guy look like a sad puppet uh, in Megatron's arms. And of course, it's got articulated hands. Uh, the side of the box just has more of the vehicle mode. And not much else to talk about as far as that goes. Masterpiece movie series right on the top. So, cool. Let's go ahead and check out this figure in hand right now. Alright guys, so here we have Jazz in vehicle mode. And let's take a quick look at some of the accessories that come with this guy first. Uh, and first up is the uh, Sam Witwicky figurine. Um... And it's okay. It's like a two inch tall little plastic figurine. It looks kind of like something you'd stick on top of a birthday cake. Um, he does not... <laughs> he looks more like Lance, Lance Henriksen than uh, Shia LaBeouf. But maybe, maybe Shia LaBeouf did not allow his uh, likeness for this particular toy. I, I really don't know. Um, he's, he's carrying the AllSpark cube, which looks decent. I mean, it's got some sculpting on it there. Um, and it's meant to kind of scale with these uh, uh, movie masterpiece figures, but I, I feel he's maybe a little bit on the big side for that. I kind of feel like something a little more akin to, say, like a Mega Constructs figure uh, sort of feels a little bit more in scale uh, than this thing. Because if you actually stood him up, he'd be he'd be really tall as compared to uh, to the vehicle. But be that as it may, uh, you do get this figurine. Uh, with it. So you also get a couple other doodads here on the back of the spoiler. You've got uh, his little crescent gun thing uh, which has this little clip that can go right onto the back of the spoiler and it can be a little tricky to get on there uh, so just take your time with it and uh, be careful. And uh, this is pretty cool. You also have the uh, extra spinal cord attachment that just plugs into the back of the weapon here and obviously we'll see that a little later in more detail and then of course this you can just uh, flip this bit forward to form the actual blaster uh, so that's that's pretty neat it's painted nicely it's got some nice um, silver paint on there and some little bit of little bit of kind of a matte gold uh, as well and this part is not not painted but just flip that up and that's for storage then the vehicle itself, it rolls nicely. Uh, this is this is the first uh, vehicle in a while I've gotten where all the wheels touch touch the ground at the same time with no problems, um, and it it holds together holds together nicely enough. There's a little bit of a gap uh, in some of the panels here, but it is just a matter of kind of massaging everything into place, and that's always going to be the case with these super intricate transformations but you got some really nice paintwork here you've got some clear lights uh, for both the headlights and these uh, little fog lights here uh, some nice paint detailing the, the Pontiac symbol is just a red blob it's not really it's not really printed which I kind of would have liked to see maybe uh, but you got all these bits uh, picked out in black um, 
And then the back, of course, the, the tail lights are clear red, uh, and then these lights here are just painted on some little silver detailing down here. And then, of course, the underside of the car, you can see a bunch of bunch of craziness. Um, not not all of this is moving parts. Some of this is just nicely picked out in paint, which is really really nice to see. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, the side mirrors I thought were going to be soft, rubbery plastic, but they are not. They are hard plastic. And this one's a this one on this side is a little bit a little bit wonky. It's a little bit dinged out of out of out of shape, and you got some some paint peel on the edges there. Um, where it probably got mushed into the package on on packing, um, but it's it's not it's not bad. It's not a big deal. So that's pretty much it for the vehicle mode. Let's go ahead and get this transformation started. All right. So to transform Jazz into robot mode, and he does come packaged in vehicle mode, so uh, it'll it won't be a problem. You won't have any confusion doing this but the first thing we want to do is basically his whole uh, side panel is going to be separated from the main part of the vehicle and we're just gonna go ahead and massage these bits out and kinda get this all separated up just like that and we'll just kinda move that off to the side uh, to kinda get it out of the way you got that going on do the same on the other side just pull everything out and we'll just move it kind of out of the way then we might as well go ahead and uh, bring this piece up and just get it up like that and there we've got it a good start going here we're gonna come around to the back and we're just gonna go ahead and separate the back halves of the car so basically we're just gonna pull all these panels until this this back half of the car is unplugged you can see these little tabs here and then that's going to separate this whole back area here but first let's go ahead and rotate this panel in like this and there's little tabs so you just want to be careful you don't want to force it but you know just pull and push uh, until you've got kind of this action going on so it should look like that and again, this is all just painted detailing. It's not a bunch of crazy pieces you have to worry about moving. So it's not it's not as complicated as it makes itself look. <laughs> and then we can go ahead just so we don't miss a step later. Um, there's actually another hinge in this section. So we can go ahead and actually pull the windshield up and over on itself just like that. And that's going to kind of create the backpack, and we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. But let's work on the legs now. So we've got these are going to be the robot mode legs here. We're going to separate this whole out bit out, and then we're going to take this side panel here. We're going to bring it out and fold it back so it's out of the way. Do the same on the other side. Fold it till it's out of the way. Bring these panels up and kind of get them out of the way. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring these whole sections out and around just like this. Out and around, then you want to flip this guy over. And uh this might be a little a little tricky to see, but on the underside of the knee pad here is a little slot and there's a little tab right here. And we're just going to bring this up and over until it tabs onto that piece just like that and we're gonna do that on both sides just like that okay now these uh, wheel sections here are gonna just fold down and around to form the back of the legs and part of the feet so we got that going on and now these panels here, you can actually see there's a little, it might be a little hard to see here. There's a little in, yeah, there you go. There's a little indentation right there for this tab to go into. And you just want to push that in 
on both sides and then that's ready to go. Now these side panels that we looked at they're gonna fold over onto themselves until this peg is gonna go into this hole right here just like that. And then we're gonna bring this whole section around till it folds over and then fold this section back over here. Then you can separate this toe out just like that. Bring the foot forward and then bring this bit back as a heel spur and it's actually going to tab into place on the uh, die cast metal foot. And there you've got basically one leg done. So we're going to go ahead and do that on the same thing on the other side. We're going to go ahead bring this section over flip it up and over and then peg it in just like that flip this back flip the toe or the foot forward this toe goes forward and then the heel spur goes back there we go we've got some some legs sort of formed already. Uh, now we can actually bring these two sections here out to the side, bring the hips up, and they don't really lock into place in any way shape or form so you just bring them up and then these sections will slide back down and you can adjust these little these little uh, silver bits however however you like. It doesn't really matter. All right next thing we're gonna do is work on the uh, the front of this guy here we're gonna go ahead and uh, straighten this piece out here we're gonna go ahead and rotate this entire section around here just like that bring this whole section up on this accordion hinge here we're gonna separate this out a little bit and now we're going to hold on to this panel and rotate just the front end of the vehicle. And it can be a little, little tricky, especially if you're not doing it <laughs> correctly. Whoop. There we go. It was getting caught on the head panel there. All right, so now that you've got that done, you can see there's two slots here and two tabs here. You bring that up and slot that together. And you're gonna go ahead and bring this panel back and then down on itself. And you'll see there are two uh, clip, two retainer pieces. And these two clip bits are just gonna clip right into there and it should hold that no problem just like so all right and now the chest panel itself uh, you're gonna kind of bring this front end down and then these you just kind of adjust to how you like them it does say how it's you're meant to do it on the, the instructions uh, but they don't always stay that way quite perfectly so you gotta just kind of adjust it until some some way that you like, and then uh, then hopefully just you know be okay with it. However, all right. So now that that's good, come on, there we go. Get these legs straightened out. We're gonna take care of this backpack situation here. We're gonna bring this panel all the way back up like it was before. We're gonna take this. Uh, spoiler, we're going to bring it all the way back like this, mush it all together, and then the spoiler is going to come over. There's some clips here that are going to go right over here and hold that into place. And then there's a tab right here that's going to go right under here. You just got to push that right in. And then on the back, he's got these little weird hooks. They're just rubbery black hooks, and you just spread those out. 
and twist them up and I don't know if, I don't know if that's part of his design or what but that's strange to me so <laughs> we're just gonna not worry about that um, next thing we're gonna do is take care of the arms so the arms we're gonna take these first panels here and they're just gonna come up like this then we're gonna take these panels that they are on and bring them up like this we're gonna bring this front section with the headlights down this is gonna go around the wheel and clip into place just like that and do the same on the other arm bring this section up bring this section back up and over the wheel and that's gonna clip into place and then you get to put the arms together so <laughs> We're going to go ahead and bring the hand forward here. This section is going to come... Oh, it's a little hard to explain. It's going to come up this way, over and around, and then you're going to kind of rest it just like that, and then this section is going to come up, and you're just going to adjust things until it lines up just like that and there you have one arm done do the same on the other side bring the fist out put, put the section out there bring it up and around and then bring this up Bring it back, and there you've got the other arm done. And last but not least, uh, we'll take care of the, the head and then just the random bits and bobs. And unfortunately, uh, my, my figure came with a bit of a flaw. He is missing a piece. You can see there's these little kind of collarbone pieces here. Uh, there's one meant to be right in that open spot. It was missing on arrival. I did already send a an email to, uh, to Hasbro Pulse and hopefully they'll be getting a replacement out to me in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I've yet to hear back from them, but it was just this afternoon, so you know I'm not, I'm not expecting anything immediately. Uh, but anyway, just to give you a heads up. And then we'll just pull this whole section up, bring this section out, and then fold it back down to reveal his robot mode head. And uh, we can turn him around and you can fiddle with these bits if you want. I don't know what makes it more or less accurate uh, as far as that goes, but uh, yeah, you can, you can fiddle those around however you like. And uh, there you have Jazz in, uh, in robot mode. Minus one uh, collarbone. But, you know, it's going to get a, a lot worse for Jazz before it gets better, so eh, it's fine. Alright, guys, so here we have Jazz, and uh, like I showed you before, he's got his little crescent gun thing, and you just fold that up and lock it into place. And you can actually just slot this right over his hand. And that is how that works. So that's pretty cool. Easy to, uh, you know, easy to attach, uh, easy to integrate, and uh, you know, it looks looks good. Looks decent enough. Got you know, works works for what it does. Um, you've also, of course, got Sam Witwicky uh, here, and I'll show him off. And he's running, doing his thing. Um, and there's that. Uh, articulation is pretty uh, pretty darn good, actually. Uh, head is on a very uh, wide range. It's not a ball joint. It's actually a, a swivel and hinge. Uh, so you get some really nice rotation out of that. Um, the head does have a gimmick with the visor. Uh, you can lift the head piece up and the visor will fold into the head and it will close showing off his eyes uh, but the visor is such a tiny piece uh, the eyes are light piped by the way it's really hard to see but they are light piped um, unfortunately like his eyes the the visor is so small and it's like it's just really hard it took me forever to actually get it 
out and onto his eyes. It comes, uh, the way he comes in the package, the visor is actually inside the helmet, uh, so you have to, you have to deploy it, uh, and, uh, I don't, I don't want to do that again. So, <laughs> this is what his face looks like without the visor on. And this is what it looks like with the visor on. And I like it very much more with the visor, so I'm leaving it on. Anyway, uh, he does have a waist articulation. Uh, he does have really nice shoulder rotation. Goes back, goes all the way around. More or less, yeah, it goes all the way around. Uh, he does have a bicep swivel. And the elbow does more than I thought it would. It's not quite a double elbow, but you get a decent range of motion out of that elbow. The fingers are, in fact, articulated individually. Uh, all four of his fingers on both hands have two joints each. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And some, some decent sculpting on those as well. Uh, the hands don't, like, swivel, which is kind of... I don't know if it's unfortunate, it's just interesting to note. Uh, his hands don't rotate. They do have a, like a rocker hinge and they can go like side to side uh, for articulation. But I guess since all of his fingers are exactly the same, doesn't really require rotation of his hands. Um, but, you know, just, just to note, something to note. Uh, the hip skirts do move up out of the way so you can get those kicks forward and out to the side. Um, Legs are a little bit more loose than I would like. Uh, they're not bad, but they do tend to, uh, you know, give when you uh, when you put too much weight on them. And he does have a knee bend, and he does have a thigh rotation as well. You do get a little bit of a rock with that foot, also. So really nice uh, articulation-wise. You get some cool poses out of this guy. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some size comparisons before we show off his final <laughs> his final gimmick, I guess. So we'll just uh, we'll stand him up maybe right here. I'll move this back a little bit. Uh, so here he is with Bumblebee, and he is he is about a head shorter than Bumblebee, and certainly um, it feels more slight of build. He's certainly not as heavy as Bumblebee. Bumblebee feels a lot heavier as a figure, and I don't know if there's just more uh, die cast in him or what, but uh, yeah, he's definitely a lot lighter. Um, here he is with Ironhide. So you can see the size difference there. Um, and then, of course, let me get this back here so I can get the old Optimus Primo in there. Hopefully without knocking anybody over. There he is with Optimus Prime. So you can see uh, they look they look good together. Um, he looks very he's a really well done figure overall, uh, and I'm I'm quite pleased. And the the transformation is not nearly as difficult or annoying as it kind of looked like it was going to be in pictures, and you get a really good looking. Uh, both modes, as a matter of fact. So, all that said, <clears throat> let's rip this guy in half. <laughs> so, of course, in the movie, Jazz gets torn in half uh, for, you know, making off-color comments and just inappropriate jokes. So, uh, this guy has that gimmick, you know? So, so, on his back, there's this little button, and you press that, and it releases, and you can just tear this dude right in half. No worries whatsoever. Um, and there he is. You got two halves of a figure. So uh, you get this little spinal cord attachment because why not? And you just plug that uh, plug that bad boy right onto his little little, little bits there. Now I believe these two pegs I think are supposed to go uh, right into these slots here, but they don't quite fit, so I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, maybe it's just slight, um, slight tolerance issue with my particular figure, I don't know. Um, but it's not, it's not that big a deal, it looks like they're, they're okay. Now, I, do, I just don't want to risk, like, uh, destroying the, the, the piece, because it is just 
kind of a soft rubber piece. Uh, but anyway, you get that going, and you've of course got yourself an exploding, terribly <laughs> murdered Chaz <laughs> that Optimus can then hold like he's a Muppet or something, and be like, oh Jazz. <laughs> Carrying your body parts like you're being <laughs> like I'm cleaning up after a birthday party. Uh, but anyway, so yes, he does have this fun gimmick. And unfortunately, I don't have uh, MPM Megatron to show off like how big Megatron is compared to them and how, how he can like carry Jazz no problem. And of course, to reattach, you just press the button and uh, just pop it back on. Easy, easy as that. Uh, no problem whatsoever. Got yourself a full figure again. But anyway, all that to say, a uh, really, really nice figure. Um, very, very beautiful paintwork. Uh, nice articulation. It's a bummer that my guy is missing a clavicle, but hopefully uh, I'll get some sort of uh, some sort of remedy for that soon from Hasbro. But uh, yeah, really nice figure overall. If you're a fan of the MPM line, I think you're going to love this guy too. So yeah, go get yourself a Jazz. Uh, in the meantime, that's going to do it for this review, guys. I want to thank you so very much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. I'll see you. Bye for now.